Tonight, the Supreme Court has overturned the ruling by Speaker of Parliament, Alban Babin, declaring four seats in the House as vacant. The founders of our tradition use the courts to do full right. And true to it, we are Democrats. We don't believe in violence. We don't believe in mischief and unnecessary political chaos. We have a blow-by-blow -blow account of a thrilling day which started from the Parliament, from, from Parliament House to the court. Here yeah, on Top Story. Now, uh, Top Story, as always, is brought to you by Telesel Connecting Energies and Holy Insecticide Spray and Coil. And tonight, the Supreme Court has overturned a ruling by Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbing, declaring four seat in Parliament as vacant. The court has issued a stay of execution on the ruling by Alban Bagbing, where now Parliament has thus been instructed to recognize and allow the four MPs to fully represent their constituencies and carry out the official duties. My colleague, Kwe Kwasante, has been monitoring a thrilling day that started in Parliament uh, to the Supreme Court and joins me in studio with details. Kweku, let's start from Parliament in the morning. We know the majority had a news conference. What was it? Well, so the, the, the MPP group did have a news conference this morning. At the time, they were in the minority. At this evening, the majority has been restored. Afe Alexander Afenyo Markin, who is the majority leader, had some really strong words about the conduct of the Speaker. According to the MPP group, they believe that the Speaker of Parliament has been acting in a way that is seeking to put him in the good books of the NDC as he prepares or lays his boot to make a rerun as Speaker of Parliament in case the NDC wins. Listen to the majority leader at the news conference he addressed earlier today in Parliament. First, we are sad that Mr. Speaker, with his years of experience in parliamentary politics, will take the path he did yesterday, basically condescending and doing the bidding of the NDC minority. From day one, this parliament has seen one chaos or the other, all as a result of the behavior of the NDC minority and often supported by Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, Mr. Speaker did his worst. But we are not perturbed by all these because clearly Mr. Speaker wants to be in the good books of his party. He wants to remain Speaker again for a second term. So around this time that there's going to be elections, he wants to be seen as having helped his party to, do, uh, to win the elections. He's no more seeing himself as a Speaker who is a father of all. And that we find very disappointing and most unfortunate. Well, so that was uh, the majority leader in the morning. But we also understand the minority had an equal response. Well, yes, Ahmed Ibrahim mm. um, had some forceful things to say. He said that the Speaker of Parliament had not done anything wrong in the view of the minority, the NDC group. And that, as far as they are concerned, the Speaker of Parliament had just sought to apply the Constitution, the Supreme Court, and that, in fact, Alban Bagwin had not purported to interpret the constitution as the majority had claimed. Ahmed Ibrahim also spoke to journalists. He said, the notice of pool by the electoral commission is out. And the pictures of those four MPs are there. They have changed their status. And based on that, there is automatic cessation. If you listen to the constitution very well, it's a member of parliament shall vacate his seat if he leaves the party based upon which he came to parliament at the turn of his election into that parliament. So at the turn of Kojo Asante's election to parliament of Ghana, he was MPP member. And therefore he must repay, remain MPP member until since January 2025. At the turn as Andi Asiyama, MPP and independent member for Formina, was filing his nomination to come to parliament in 2021. He came as an independent member for Formina, and therefore within the four-year mandate, his status must not change. Have their status changed or not? It has changed. And the speaker says that that article was put into the constitution to be able to protect the loyalty of the members of parliament to their constituent. So if you have come and you have changed your loyalty, should they still remain, allow you to be there? So clearly, we don't need to believe this. 
And I don't think even a professor, Professor Wayoseni got it wrong. And you don't need a professor to tell you this. It's as clear as that. So I don't think the speaker got it wrong. The political parties, if not politics that they are doing, are aware of the consequences. And that is why they always defer primaries in those consequences that they are massaging. If not, why is it in January they do open nominations in Formula? Well, so that was the minority in the morning when they had to respond to the news conference by the majority. Now, the majority then were able to get a Supreme Court to adjudicate on the application for state of execution. Kweku, you were there. Well, yes. And in fact, if you look at the, the, the listing of the Supreme Court today, this matter was not scheduled for hearing. Uh, uh, um, but the, the court um, did sit on this. And if, if you look at the, the court composition, the Chief Justice herself, Madam Gertrude Tokuno, Chief Justice, presided over the panel. Kwame Adibu Asiedu, JSC, was also on the, on the panel. Justice Yao Dakun Asari was also on the panel. Mm -hmm. Justice Mariama Ousu was also on the panel. And then Justice Ernest Yao Gaiwu. These were the five persons that formed the Supreme Court panel that did deliver this verdict about an hour or so ago. The lawyer for Alexander Fenyo Markin today in court was Parkwisi Abedu. We must emphasize that this was an ex parte application. What this means, what this means in uh, plain language was that mm. the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General, who mm. are parties to this suit, were not in court today to actually make an argument in their own defense. That is, the applicant, Alexander Fenyo Markin, and his lawyers went to court to say that there is a matter of significant and urgent importance that the Supreme Court must deal with or or a miscarriage of justice will occur or some sort of serious development will occur for which reason the Supreme Court must hear us now and then normally grant a 10-day interim injunction mm. which will then expire and then the parties will now file on notice and then the case will be heard. So this was an ex party. The judges did ask uh, Pakwisi Abedu who was on his feet making this argument in court why was he coming by way of ex party? And then he said that it is due to the likely mischief that a halt of the business of parliament will occur if the, the Supreme Court does not make a determination in their favor. Mm. And so the court then asks, at some point, Pakwisi Abedu said, listen, the NDC, NDC are seeking to take political advantage of this. Then well, Mariamo was just shot and said that, listen, we are not here to do politics. We are here to do law. So if you, can, if you have points of law to argue, please bring that forward. And so Pakwisi Abedu, the lawyer for Alexander Fenyo Markin, then goes ahead to talk about how he believes that the, the, the decision taken by the speaker will affect the smooth running of government business in parliament for which reason they did not want to do that. Then he went on to talk about how this will deny the constituents of these four MPs their right of representation mm. in parliament. And then again, Pakosi Abedu argues that the speaker usurped the original exclusive jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. That is the Supreme Court's jurisdiction granted by the court as the only institution that is mandated to interpret the constitution. Mm. Then Justice Yao Dakwasari asked him, is there any part of the documents they've attached to their, 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 their application to, before the court that shows that the, the, chief, uh, the, 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 the Speaker of Parliament purported to interpret the constitution? Then he goes on to explain that, well, the, the, the form and shape of the argument that the Speaker of Parliament had put out sort of suggests that he was seeking to do so. And then he also talks about how the steps taken by the MPs does not amount to cross carpeting and it's only supposed to take effect in the future. You will recall that yesterday in the speaker's ruling, he referred to that and said, yeah. well, if that is the argument, then, it will render moot those constitutional provisions and he did not listen to that. And so he went on and on and on about that. Then the Chief Justice then asks, were these persons heard? Were they given the right of hearing? And then Pakusi Abedu says, well, no, that did not happen and that these persons were not heard. And then Mariama Ousu, Justice, and Justice Enes Gai, who comes in and says, well, that is your strongest point. Why are you not making this point before the court? And you are going on the tangent of politics and how this will affect business or parliament and all that. So the, the, the Supreme Court listened to him on that as to whether or not these persons were heard and their right to natural justice having been denied. That is the argument that Pakusi Abedu did then go ahead to make. So he then go ahead to... Um, apply that the, 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 the pre-ruling status quo must prevail. Mm. That is, 
the status quo, what existed prior to the Speaker of Parliament last night reading that ruling, the Supreme Court must let it prevail. And then just as he was about to, to wrap up, the, 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 the Chief Justice herself, Madam Justice Chokunu, asked him, ask him, was this process served on Parliament? Can they confirm? And then Paco Siabedu refers to the Speaker's banter yesterday with Alexander Fenyo Markin. What Fenyo Markin says, the documents were thrown at the desk of the legal office in Parliament and that they tried to evade service. And the Chief Justice says, well, throwing documents at persons is actually effective service. And so okay. the court will consider that that service has actually been done. So if you look at the government of the application before the court, Pakwesi Abedi, because he was ex parte, he was asking for 10 days interim injunction. And that if the court was minded to grant him that 10 day interim injunction, after it expires in 10 days, they will come on notice. This time around, it will give an opportunity for the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General, who are listed as parties to this suit, to come to court and then offer a defense in their own right. Right? So that was the argument they made. And then the court decided to take a recess, go and consider their opinion, and then come back. Mm. Then about 30 minutes, 45 minutes later, the court then returned. And then the court accordingly granted the prayers that the, 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 the stay of execution application that had been made. And in fact, let me quote part of it. It says, we have read affidavits and we note from Exhibit B and the official records that the Baileys had served the speaker. This time around, the court saying that the Baileys had truly served the speaker. In fact, the speaker had contended that by a secular the chief justice herself had put out, the speaker of parliament could only be served on Mondays. But that is an argument that could be made in court. But once those documents were presented to the legal department of parliament, the Supreme Court said it considered that that application had been served. And that they, are prop, uh, they, they, they appreciate the urgency mm. and the special circumstances of this matter. And that denying the constituents their right to representation is grave enough to, to warrant this ruling that they, that, that, that they were making. This is a pronouncement they, by they, the they, court. They, they, and this is the Chief Justice speaking. Mm. And then she goes on to say that the cases raises real and fundamental constitutional issues that will be determined. And in fact, that goes to you know, in, in granting such injunction application, the court will ask whether or not the, 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 the case has been made, whether or not there are real constitutional issues that the court will have to answer at the end of this trial, or, or, or at the end of the hearing of this case. And the court concluded that this has been done. And then again, they go on about how these persons, these four MPs, have not been granted the right to fair hearing. And so this stay of execution is granted. And they are, ex they are staying the ruling of the speaker up until when the full determination of the case is, made. is, is made. Mm. And that is interesting because the court, the, 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 the applicant was asking for 10 days, but the court says, looking at the very weighty nature of this matter, we consider that 10 days is not enough to just stay the hands of parliament on this. We are staying the hands of parliament until we fully determine this matter. Mm. And then the court finally goes ahead to put some measures in place that they believe will ultimately lead to an expeditious trial of this case. That is, the defendants, the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General should, within seven days, file their statement of case. And then after these seven days, the, all the parties must file their joint memorandum of actions after seven days. So in 14 days, per this ruling of the court, the expectation will be that the full complement of the documents would have been filed in court for the trial to start. So the lowdown... The Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbins, ruling yesterday that vacated four seats in Parliament, the as Supreme Court has stated. Mm. But but I guess this will come as wonderful news to the majority who were, were, were in court today. What was their reaction? Well, yes, the majority leader flanked by about 30 of his colleagues in Parliament, most of whom were in Parliament earlier today to solidarize with him when he organized that press conference. were also in court. They came out. They, they, in fact, there were chants and jeers right from the court entrance down there. They were happy about the court's judgment. This is exactly what the majority leader, Alexander Fenyo Makin, said after the court ruling to journalists. The founders of our tradition used the court to do full right. And true to it, we are Democrats. We don't believe in violence. We don't believe in mischief and unnecessary political chaos we came to court believing that 
the court will do right and indeed the court has just done that the rights of those mps have been reinforced as well as the rights of those constituents who elected them i will leave the ghanaian public to peruse the full ruling of the court and then the discussions can continue Well, this is still a tough story. Let's uh, bring in uh, some more reactions on this particular developing story. Uh, we've been joined on the line by Roxon Nelson da Fiamapo. He's MP for South Dai, a uh, member of the minority in parliament. We also have Professor Bafo Azmandia, former UN governance senior advisor, and Kweku Sa Sari, former director of the Ghana School of Law. Let me start with you, uh, Roxon Nelson da Fiamapo. Grateful that you've joined us here. Uh, but how is your side reacting to this particular news? Thank you very much. Uh, number one, we are scandalized by this decision, if it is to be called a decision, because the jurisprudence underpinning uh, uh, practice of law in this country tells us certain succinct law, settled law, one, an ex parte, a grant of another based on an ex parte application cannot stay beyond nine days. It elapses with time after nine days. We are informed. We are informed. That is why I've been asking for a copy of the ruling. Nobody has been able to provide it. So we are, we are holding these discussions based on the information you have put out. That the court says, we are informed that the court says a certain decision of the speaker is stayed until the final determination of a certain case before the court. First of all, like I said, a grant of another based on an ex parte application elapses with a fluctuation of time after nine days. That's one. Number two, what is the Supreme Court staying? Which order? There's nothing to stay. This is a non-executable order. The Speaker gave information to Parliament. And for the benefit of our listeners, let me read the last two paragraphs of Speaker's information to the House. Paragraph 27 of the speaker's ruling, uh, uh, speaker's information to the House says, Honorable members, it is important to point out that the speaker is called upon by the standing order of Parliament, particularly Order 18, to inform the House of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under Clause 1B to E. G and H of Article 97 of the Constitution. That's paragraph 27. Paragraph 28. Accordingly, I proceed to inform the House that by the notification of the polls, of the polls, the following members of Parliament have by their ac actions vacated their seats in Parliament. The members are, then he, he, he mentions their names. Honorable Peter Yakwatiaka, NDC MP for Amenfi Central in the Western Region, was referred to uh, as an independent parliamentary candidate for the constituency. Two, Honorable Andrew Yawakwesiyama, independent member of, of, of Formina, uh, for Formina constituency in, in, in the Central Region, now referred to mm. as MPP parliamentary candidate for the constituency. Three, Honorable Kwejo Asante, MPP member for uh, MPP MP so for to whom in the mm -hmm. Eastern Region, now referred to as uh, independent candidates uh, for the same constituency. And Honorable Cynthia Mamli Morris, the MPP MP for Aguna West constituency in the Central Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. The House is accordingly so informed. Honorable members, I thank you for your uh, patience and attention. Is, is this is this what the Supreme Court is saying? But but, but whose whose information is this? Not the not the speaker. Yes, this is the speaker's information to the house. So how do you say such an information? But but the speaker was called to to rule on 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 a concern the minority leader had brought. Is, isn't that I, the case? Are you are you are you the one are you the one calling it a ruling? 
are you the one calling it a ruling? But what the is it? The person who spoke, hold on, the person who spoke to the house <laughs> says, this is the information I have for you. So if you are labeling it as a ruling, I don't know, I don't know, uh, I don't know how that can be so labeled. He says, this is the information I have, that these four members of parliament have by their conduct done A, B, C, D. The speaker has given information to the house. Then somebody goes to the court and says that this amounts to a certain order, and therefore that order should be stayed. How, how is this to be stayed? With all due respect to the court. The court has fallen into an error of law. That's how we call it. The court has fallen into an error of law. Okay. This is not this is not something you can say. It's it's not executable. Mm. Fortunately for us, we still have more lawyers on the line. Let me, let me bring in former director of the Ghana School of Law, uh, Kweku Ansari. Grateful to you, sir, for joining us here. Uh, I mean, we spoke to you on this particular matter yesterday. Uh, did this come to you as a surprise? Not at all. And frankly, um, I- I'll start by, by appealing you know, to everybody to be just patient, I mean, calm, measured in our utterances, and respect, have respect for the rule of law. I am not surprised at all because, as I said yesterday, this current Supreme Court is too predictable. And yesterday, I emphasized the point that the MPP may rush to court to get a verdict you know, with which they can dance around the present Supreme Court and back to Parliament. That's exactly what... But be that as it may, I am going to urge the general citizenry to just be you know, respectful. Having said that, I'll add that I'm not surprised because if you look at the composition of the Supreme Court that sat on the case today, they were all appointed by the current government. And I spoke against it. It was a state they were packing the court for instances that have happened today. Why? I, 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 are you saying they've done something contrary to what the law permits them to? Yes. And, uh, and I'll come to that. One, as Dafi Mepo just rightly pointed out, under our jurisprudence, if you go to court and ask for a remedy, the court cannot give you more than what you sought. So by asking 10 days and the Supreme Court giving unlimited, they have heard. That is not our law. Our law is that if you go for one CD, you should be given one CD, not more than one CD. If there are extenuating circumstances by which you, be, you should be given more, then you have to make a case for that. But if you listen to the argument from the, the, the information, you know, just uh, brought to attention from Parliament, the applicant himself insisted that, yes, you give me 10 days so that I can bring the other side on notice. That is unknown practice. That's the basic rule of practice, you know, before our court. So the Supreme Court, you know, got it all wrong. Really? And they've done it, you know, because... Uh, Maria Mohusu said they, you know, they did not seem to do politics, but exactly, you know, that was exactly they did. They did politics. But, um, but, but if you but, recall w- the fact that they mm-hmm. were appointed by, you know, the current government, and the the, the 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 three of them were appointed about three months ago. This is a very weak Supreme Court. Well, very, well, very weak well, Supreme Court. Well, Mr. Ansari, but, court, but but what does the, uh, I mean, the law of na- who na- should mm. have been empaneled? This, this raises to the fore. It brings, you know, all of again, the debate as to whether we should leave the, you know, empaneling to the chief justice or whether the entire Supreme Court should sit and agree upon who and who should compose the court, you know, for its business. This idea of, you know, the Supreme Court selecting, doing it selectively, must stop. Well, Mr. Ansari, Mr. Ansari, but... but Hello, can, can you hear me, Mr. Sorry. Yes. 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 I'm, I, yes. I want to find out from you. What does the rule of natural justice, you know, uh, and entail? The that, other side. Mm-hmm. So you should hear the other side. 
Uh-huh. But that is the more reason why in certain exceptional situations, you can hear only one. That is when, you know, we say that the matter was, you know, heard upon an ex parte application. It means it was without notice to the other side. Number two, the case was not heard, you know, on its merits. What the Supreme Court has done, you know, is to go into the merits already. If they say that uh, you know, until the final determination, they resolve the matter. All right. Uh, executable order before the Supreme Court. The, the, the speaker in his ruling yesterday, before making the ruling, he said, ladies and gentlemen, I am lying on order 18, order rule 18 of our standing orders. He made it quite clear. Now, mm-hmm. if you compare 18 and 74, there was no order. So what was the Supreme Court saying? Okay. All right. Uh, let me bring in Professor Bafu Ajiman uh, and get his thought on this matter. Uh, Mr. Bruce- uh, I'm, I'm grateful to you. Uh, uh, let me let me bring in Professor Bafo oh, Ajman. Do I hear? They should. Yeah. Uh, Pro- Prof, I'm grateful to you for joining us here. Uh, I mean, it's been quite some interesting 24 hours. But in all of this, from the governance perspective, what do you make out of what is happening? Well, thanks for having me again. You know, we are really in a, our trying times as a democracy, and as you know. Uh, every democracy, especially the younger ones, such as ours, will have to go through these kinds of uh, times. And I think it's very important that uh, the political parties, their leaders and followers, maintain cool heads and patiently wait for the 14 days that the court has given. During this period, I think we should try, all of us, we should try to stay calm, to keep our country in this peaceful mode. Now, regarding the issue, I am not a lawyer, uh, like my good friends who have just spoken, and therefore I may sound pedestrian in the kinds of things I say. But I think uh, the the ruling by the speaker uh, certainly uh, speaks to uh, shift power in parliament. Uh, which, of course, uh, does the expectation when, in fact, a number of them leave, as the Constitution has been mentioned at the seven, that if you quit. But then I've also had so many uh, questions about this, so many imponderables, raised by lawyers and non-lawyers, citizen lawyers, including even uh, uh, Professor Azar, who uh, is not a... Uh, who is not a what I would say is not sympathetic to the ruling party at all. So looking at all this, I think uh, there's a need for uh, the parties involved to maintain their coup. Now, you see, it seems to me that, uh, again, not being a lawyer, it seems to me when the speaker made the decision, maybe he was a little bit impatient, uh, because I think at that time it was made known that this case was uh, at the court. But of course, the speaker is not bound by, by that. He presides over the parliament, and he has to do what he thinks is right based on the evidence that he has. But again, this evidence has been questioned by so many lawyers, so many commentators on this issue. So again, here, I'm not sure where we stand. But the bottom line is here. If you go to the history of uh, this particular provision, in the, we all know that it, so it was in the 1960s. When during the CPP reign, uh, the CPP on Chroma used it to uh, weaken the opposition. And subsequently, all constitutions we have had, uh, the three of them, have inserted this uh, provision so that we do not have a situation where uh, we are able to kill off the opposition and develop a one party state. So, with that historical context, I'm thinking that the, the speaker, not only a speaker back then, but also even the speaker of Koi during his time, the ruling that he gave on the CMS case could have been different. So I think uh, this is where I think all of us should find a way uh, as we head towards the election. Okay. This mm. thing is too close for us to, you know, uh, get into anything that will destabilize our political processes. But I'm happy that so far all the parties are resorting to the rule of law uh, it's at the parliament itself and also at the Supreme Court 
So let's see the outcome of all these processes. Okay, grateful to you, Professor Pafo Ajimendo. He's former UN Governance Senior Advisor. Let me bring in the Majority Leader, Alexander Fenomarkin. Grateful to you for joining us here. Obviously, uh, this must come as good news to you. This is exactly what you wanted. What's next after here? Okay, I guess uh, we, we've lost him, but uh, let me try and see if I still have Roxanne Nelson uh, Daffy Amapo on the line. Ro- Roxanne, I'm grateful to you yes. uh, uh, that you're still here. But if yes. you look at paragraph 24 of the Speaker's yes. uh, statement, he says... In response to this notification and request, Right Honorable Professor Aaron Michael Quay proceeded to declare the seat vacant. 25 says, however, I must emphasize that this ruling made by the previous speaker does not bind other speakers, including myself. So if he says this ruling, why is his not a ruling? Well, speaker concluded by saying that this is an information to the House. That is the difference between this and whatever Speaker Michael Quay must have said four years ago. So I am saying, how do you say such an information to the House? How is this to be stated? Okay. All right. Yes, with the court order. How do you say? So, so what, what, what does your side intend to do? Now, we, look, we have made the point that in every jurisdiction, the Supreme Court is a political institution. And so we must begin to see actions of the Supreme Court as a political institution with political consequences. And this is one of them. Two, my brother, if you understand how the registry of the Supreme Court works, there is no way an ex parte application filed this afternoon could have been heard today expressly. No way. But it has happened. But it has happened because it goes through a vigorous process of having been filed, having to be put on a certain on certain notification list. You have to be issued with a notice that the court, will, in its own time, will issue a hearing notice. And that notice will have to be issued by the register of the court. So how, so under what circumstances was the CJ informed that a certain expert application has been issued? for which the CJ expressly empaneled five members of the Supreme Court to hear this matter this afternoon. Okay. Mm. Uh, do do that we is see... Another, that is another level of concern for the NDC as a party. Mm. W- will your side cooperate with this coming in from, from, from the Supreme Court on Tuesday when you, you go back to the no. House? Parliament, Parliament is Parliament. Okay. We will do what we do in Parliament. Trust me on Tuesday. And, and what, what would that be? Why? We'll do our parliamentary work. <laughs> we'll do our parliamentary work. Okay. I'm grateful we'll to you. Our parliamentary work. I'm grateful to you, Roxy Nelson, Daphia Mapo, MP for South Daida. This has been Top Story brought to you by Telesat. Collecting energies and holding set size spray uh, and coil. Enjoy a holy sleep. Kweku Asante is coming up next with uh, Ghana Connect. Kweku. There's a business in every woman. 